Hey everybody, this is Justin over at 1126 Art Studio, and today I'm going to go over how to use the 1126 Embroidery Action. So let's go ahead and dive in. Once you have the Action folder downloaded and then opened, you're going to find three separate files. You're going to find the Action file, a PSD file, and a brush file. The first thing that we're going to want to do is get that brush file and the action file uploaded into Photoshop. If you do not know how to go about that, I will show you. You're going to want to find your Photoshop folder within your Applications folder. Find Presets. You're then going to find Actions and Brushes. Drag the action file into the actions folder, the brush file into the brushes folder. When you get that finished, you're going to want to go to Photoshop. First, go up to your brush panel, hit this little settings tab, go to load brushes, find the 1126 stitching brush, and get it loaded. Once that is complete, you're going to want to come over here to the little play button it says actions hit these little bars up at the top right go to load actions and the same thing find 1126 embroidery action file and get it uploaded once that is complete you're going to want to go back to the folder and open up the 1126 embroidery PSD once you have it open, let's drag in some artwork. I use my logo here, bring it to a nice size. Looks good. Now this next step should be something you only have to do the first time you go to run this action. We're going to go down to the add a layer styles, the little FX down here. Go to pattern overlay. Hit this little drop down arrow. Now, I already have the web patterns uploaded into my patterns, but if you do not, hit this little wheel right here, go down to web patterns, and hit a pin. After you do that, you should see the patterns like so. It's time to run the action. So the first thing that you're going to do is rasterize your art layer because this action will not work on a smart object. Next thing is the most important step of this entire process. Change your layer name to logo, capital L-O-G-O. -O. Doing this will tell the action that you want to run the action on this layer. Now, I like to keep my logo or my artwork uh, as a white color. Uh, that is because the color overlay at the end of this action works best on white. So go ahead and fill it with white. Make sure that your brush is set on the 1126 stitching brush. And now it's time to run the action. So come up to your actions panel. Find the embroidery PS, you know, the embroidery file. You're going to see light, medium, heavy, and finish setup. They're named accordingly. So uh, the light will run nicely on light or thinner type of artwork like my logo here. Medium, a little heavier, and heavy, of course, heavy. So I'm just going to go ahead and press play. And just in a matter of seconds, you have a embroidered artwork. So, you see that you've got a color overlay here. You can go ahead and double click that and change the artwork to any color you want. Makes it real easy. Now, I noticed down here, um, my art studio, there's some openings that I would like to be a little bit more clean. So there are two options. I can take the stitching brush, go in a little smaller, 
and make those holes myself, like so. Or I'll show you another process bring your artwork back in, make it a little larger, go ahead and rasterize, change your file to logo. Now the stitching brush, it defaults at size 15. I thought that my holes felt a little bit uh, too heavy, so I'm going to make it size 10. Go ahead and run that action one more time. And as you can see, there's a little bit more space right here. Now it affects inside of the 1-1 one, one and the 2-6. Just take your stitching brush and you can just, you know, if that bothers you, you can just fill it in. Uh, Personally, I kind of like the effect. It makes it a little um, bit more dimensional. But what's nice about this is with the brush and then the overlay, uh, you can, once the action does most of the work for you, you can really go in and add details. Now I'm going to bring in another piece of artwork to truly show you how fast this action works once once you understand the process and everything that goes into it. So, bring in another lo logo, the devil in the details. All right, so rasterize, change your layer name to logo. Make sure you're on the stitching brush. This is a smaller logo, so I'm going to go size 10 and hit play. And just like that, matter of seconds, the logo is nice and embroidered. Pretty slick, huh? All right, so I'm gonna go through one more thing and that is multicolor pieces of artwork and how the process works with that. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. I'm gonna bring in my wife's business logo. Shout out, yo, what's up? Okay. So process starts the same. We're going to rasterize the artwork. Now, there are several different ways you can go about this. Um, I'm going to show you the process that I use, uh, but you go ahead and separate the colors on the different layers however you see fit. But what I do is go up to select color range I'm going to choose the pink, hit OK. Now you see the marching ants. Uh, I'm on a max, so I'm going to hit Command J. And I'm going to name this layer pink. Go back down to your original layer, color range. I'm going to choose white. Get that blue out of there. Hit OK, again, Command J, name the layer white. Again, go to select, color range, pick the blue, marching ants, Command J, and then change it to blue. Now I'm going to shut the, I'm not going to delete the logo, I'm just going to turn the layer off. So you got blue, you got white, and you've got pink. And I forgot to mention that naming your layers when running this action on a multicolor piece of artwork is actually super important. The action is going to look for the layer named logo and layer one at the end. So your layer names need to be something other than logo and layer one for the layers that you're not running the action on. Now you run the action the exact same way you would a one color piece of artwork from here on out. And that's why I'm actually going to fill it with white, change it to logo, 
make sure my brush is on the stitching, which it is, to action, and hit light. All right, there it goes. Here's where the color overlay comes into play. Bring up the original, double click that color overlay, color I dropped the blue, hit OK, hit OK, turn it off, and there's your blue stitching. Again, here's a nice area that it didn't quite fill it all the way. So you can take your stitching brush and just fill that in if you want. Okay, so I'm going to turn the blue layer off. I'm going to go with the white layer, change it to logo. I'm gonna try the medium for this one. Still on my brush, gonna go ahead and hit play. We've got a warning, no pixels are selected. I'm going to assume that the medium folder, the medium process was a little too, too much for this piece of artwork, which means there's more steps than there is artwork. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay, hit stop, and then Come up to your actions, select this, uh, go ahead and close the medium, go down to finish setup, and hit play. Now what you'll see here is it took the two layers and it went ahead and made it embroidered logo. Everything is totally the way it should be. Uh, just that finish setup just helps you finish the process in case that were to happen. There's not enough artwork for that to finish running on. Hopefully that makes sense. So this was white, so I don't need to do anything with it. Um, last but not least is the pink layer. Head and change its name to logo. Fill it with white. I've got my brush here, and go ahead to medium and hit play. And again, in seconds, it's totally ready to go. Go ahead and shut them off. Double click on the color overlay, click your white box, choose pink, OK, OK, shut off, turn blue, white, and pink on. All right, and now that your artwork is embroidered, it's of course ready to mock up, which is the entire reason why we did this entire process. So, going to select all of my embroidered layers, hit Command G to make them into a group, I'm gonna name the folder, Go up to my lines, duplicate group, and of course I'm going to put it on my 1126 dad hat. Go over to the dad hat, command T to select it, bring it over, put it into place. Zoom in here, I mean just look how much more realistic that looks, uh, it's just as far as a mock-up is concerned, I feel just that little bit of detail, just that little that little bit of work embroidering the artwork instead of just slapping it on to the mock just makes it that much more realistic and uh, I'm sure all of your clients will appreciate it. Now, I put the layers into a group and duplicated it to bring it in I did it that way because you can then open up your folder and you still have your individual layers with the color overlays. If you 
we're working with a one color logo or maybe, maybe this color scheme wasn't set in stone. Now that it's on the hat, you can double click on the overlays and on the mock-up itself, you know, go ahead and change the colors. Um, the dad hat itself, uh, you can go down to the front panel, hit the color box, and maybe this doesn't do well on a black hat. Maybe it, you know, maybe it needs to be a, a light pink hat. Maybe a blue hat. Maybe a gray hat. Purple hat, etc., etc. You know, that's why we make these files the way that they are set up. You know, for ease of use and easy change. Easy, easy, easy. I think that about wraps it up. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope that everything makes sense, and that the action is easy to use, and that you get a lot of use out of it. I'm sure you will enjoy it, and I'm sure your clients will appreciate it. Until next time, thanks for watching.